In this video, we'll review user management. We'll start by going over the different member roles. To do that, we'll take a look at organizations and members. And let's take a look at a new member. So I'll go to invite member. I'll enter their email address. And I'll need to select their member role. The first four member roles are available to all organizations. User, manager, admin, and owner. Users are your typical end users. They will be able to access and add items to their assigned collections. Managers additionally have the ability to delete and manage access to their assigned collections. Administrators have the ability to perform all tasks except for accessing billing and subscriptions. That's reserved for the owner role. Lastly, if you are part of an enterprise organization, you will also have the ability to set custom roles. Custom roles can be used to grant specific permissions depending on the preferences of your organization. Typically, we see custom roles granted in larger organizations that have specialized roles for their users. For example, someone in an auditor role may only need to be able to access event logs and reports and none of the other management activities. Similarly, someone in an IT support role may need to be able to manage users and perform password resets, but they do not need to be able to do any other activities. You can mix and match between these and the manager permissions on the left based on whatever you'd like to grant to those users. You'll also notice that at the top of my invite member dialog box, I also have the ability to assign groups and collections. Groups are ways to group different users to allow them access to collections at scale. Here, I'll only be able to select from existing groups. In this case, I have an HR payroll and HR recruiting already configured, but we'll take a look at groups more in a moment. For collections, I can use those groups to go ahead and grant permission for those collections, or if perhaps this is an administrator user, I want to grant them access to all current and future collections, in which case they will be able to see all collections moving forward. Otherwise, I can set their permissions as I would like. I have four options, can view, can view except passwords and can edit, can edit except passwords. And I can choose one or many different collections for them to have access to. Please note that granting permissions for both a top level collection as well as a nested collection, so in this case collaboration comms, are each managed independently. So just be aware that at this time, permissions are not inherited based on the parent collection. Now in this example case, with only three users, I may not have a use for groups, but as my organization continues to scale, it tends to be much easier to manage my users based on a grouping of similar users who all need to have the same permissions rather than managing them one by one. If I go to my groups tab here, I can create a new group, give it a name. In this case, now I want a group for benefits. If I had skim or directory connector enabled, I could set up an external ID to allow it to connect to that third party system. I can define who should be a member of that group. So in this case, I'll choose my end user example. And then I can also choose the collections. 
So this is going to specify, based on group membership, what collections should these users have access to. So rather than choosing these permissions and collections one by one, I can simply choose the permissions for this particular group, and then it will automatically give them permissions for the correct collections. In this payroll example, I've given access to two different users who have different roles. Remember, the user role will not have the ability to delete or manage access to their collections. However, since this user has been designated as a manager, they will have those permissions. I can see what collections this group has been assigned here. And permissions for each of the different collections can be managed independently. Now let's discuss managing access. Within my organizations and settings, I have a few different options available here. The first, and this is available to enterprise organizations, is single sign-on. Within this single sign-on dialog, I can set up any OIDC or SAML 2.0 identity provider. This will allow my users to first authenticate with my IDP, whether that is Azure Active Directory, Okta, or another supported IDP. And I can control my user access there. Now you'll notice that member decryption options still has master passwords selected. Based on the Bitwarden Zero Knowledge Architecture, a master password is still required to decrypt vault data. We do have an option to use a key connector instead if you're willing to self-host your own decryption key server. If that's something that you're interested in, please contact Bitwarden Support for setup assistance. If you enable single sign-on, we recommend that you perform any two-step login with your identity provider. If, however, you're choosing not to enable single sign-on, you can enable two-step login with Duo or within policies, if you have an enterprise organization, you can also choose require two-step login, which will allow any user to be able to set up their own choice of two-step login. Users have a variety of options within their account settings and security, two-step login, and providers. Now, in addition to logging in with single sign-on or a two-step login, you may also want to set up automatic provisioning. We have two options available for this, depending on both your IDP as well as what level of organization you currently have. Skim provisioning is going to be the most straightforward of the two options we offer, as this will have you simply click on Enable Skim, Save, and then you'll be provided with your skim URL for your Bitwarden endpoint, and then be provided with your API key. The rest of your setup will happen with your IDP, and we have several guides that walk you through that process. The other option is the Bitwarden Directory Connector. This is a locally run application, which can either be downloaded and used as software, or can be run through the command line. This will allow for either on-demand or regularly scheduled syncing between your IDP and Bitwarden. This has more compatibility as it can work with any LDAP system.